Hi, um, my name is Rosario Parker Gordon. Uh, most of you know me as Rio. And before we begin, I just wanted to say a really quick thank you to Sarah and Kylie, as well as uh, thank you to my mentor, Faith. Um, and a thank you to you all for taking the time to listen to me today. I wanted to begin this presentation with this photo of myself really early in my scene making career uh, so we can see where it all began. And this photo here where you can see me in the present. So I'm going to start by giving a quick overview of some of the themes and ideas in my work and then go through specific examples. I've titled this page notes on content and subject, but I maybe should have titled it a list of some of my interests. Um, these are community and collaboration, autobiography, specifically autobiography referring to private and public spheres of life and my career experience, and access, specifically accessibility within institutions. But how do these ideas manifest? For the purposes of this presentation, I've separated my work into two forms. We have image and text and objects or other objects. Image and text referring to zines and objects referring to the three-dimensional object, objects that I make that are not zines, um, meaning anything that isn't pages of zines, uh, which will hopefully become clearer as we go on. So starting out with image and text, I would like to open with a quote from cartoonist Linda Berry. She says, when I work on a book, I usually start with a question and I don't sit around and go, I need to write a book, what's a good question? It will be a question that's just clanging around in my head. If you're at all familiar with zines and zine makers, you know that we make things because we have an idea, we have something to say. So I thought this quote from Linda Berry, who I'm glad I remembered I had this drawing of, uh, summed it up quite well. So as Linda Berry says, there's a question, and for me, zines, let me share this question. But why zines? Why not paintings or prints or any other media? Here are just a few of the reasons. The zine format can be very accessible. They can be shown online or in person and can be distributed anywhere. Some places I've distributed zines includes libraries, record shops, uh, by mail or via Instagram. Zines are also really makeable. They use affordable materials such as paper and any kind of writing utensil or even just collage. Um, and can often be printed for free or at an affordable price at libraries or a school institution, which is how I print my zines. Zines can also be effective community builders and starters. From the sci-fi zines uh, of the 30s, bringing together nerds from all across America to the little magazines of the Harlem Renaissance, distributing ideas throughout Black communities, to the zines that I make that are read consistently by the same 10 to 20 people who've come to form my zine community. Zines are extremely effective community builders. Here's some examples of some zines I've made. These are all mini zines or one page zines. And I use this format to stick to a really tight theme, uh, such as my zine on top of this stack, Cover with Ants, which references objects in my studio space. These zines I usually specifically make with the intent that they can be printed in black and white on bond paper and handed out for free. Um, although they are designed uh, with the option that I could print them in color. I also make longer format zines that can incorporate comics, vignettes, drawings, research from life on the internet, and images from my phone's photo archive. So here's a photo so that you can get a sense of scale between these kinds of zines. Um, a longer format zine I made, Let Go Volume 2, is the bigger zine next to some of the mini zines from the previous slide. Volume one of this zine series, which you might be able to see in the stack to the left was a mini zine. And making volume two of this series longer format was a choice meant to help me step outside of my comfort zone and learn how to deal with something longer than the six to eight pages that the mini zine format offers. Uh, volume two contained 22 pages as well as front and back covers. So testing out a new longer format with Let Go Volume 2 led to more experimentations in the form for Let Go Volume 3. This zine is made up of three mini zines and plastic ants inside of a hand folded and screen printed box. The zine was really important in my timeline of work because it represented a lot of firsts, including my first time referencing and using tropes of playing cards, board games, and old books. 
as well as a first time prioritizing re reader interactivity via modular components. Um, in this case, the three individual zines, the ants and the box, all components that work together individually as well as to or that work individually as well as together. Um, this is also where I'm beginning to see zines as objects that can interact with other objects, which opened up a lot of experimental options for me that I expanded upon in this scene, the dialectic box. This box contains the Let Go Volume 3 zine from this slide, um, as well as a mini zine titled Seed Savers, uh, More Plastic Ants, Wooden Dice, and a longer format zine titled Dialectic. So in this scene, I'm once again referencing playing cards, board games, old books, but I'm additionally beginning to parody language and visuals of the institution, including the ISBN number that you might be able to spot under the dialectic scene on the box um, and a colophon. So I'm gonna show one or two details of some of these objects. So here's a page and a spread from the dialectic scene. On the left, there's a page that contains a direct reference to some bureaucratic mail I received. It says this page is intentionally left blank, I think probably from a bill. Um, this is a good example of my use of text, a lot of which is taken verbatim from conversations or from other texts like manuals or books, or in this, in this instance, um, mail. On the right, there's a spread uh, which contains my first reference to a colophon in a zine, which is a publisher's imprint inside of a book, uh, usually containing a sort like a short blurb of information about the publication and publisher. And I'm kind of playing with and parroting this idea by having my colophon be empty. Here we have another object that goes with the scene, the wooden dialectic dice, um, one of which has some normal pips and another has ants for pips. So this seems like a good point to begin segueing into my work as objects. At this point, let go volume three and dialectic box are really exploring objectness. And I would consider both of these to be straddling the line between object and text image work and the jumping off point for my explorations into 3D objects. This is Bicycle 769. It is a paper mache bike. So I'm beginning to take the materials of zines, which is paper and using it to make more dimensional objects. Um, I'm also using a lot of the same concepts for my zines. Uh, this bike works with ideas of autobiography. It's a two scale replica of my bike, also working with the same ideas of access and accessibility. Uh, bikes is accessible transportation, uh, the materials making up this bike also being accessible, paper mache, wood, cardboard, um, a lot of things that I already had in my studio. Um, and I'd also like to note that this object and the next one that I show will be objects that were specifically made for an exhibition, uh, Hits of Positivity Wildlife Rescue. This is garden sculpture meant to be displayed across from Bicycle 769. You can see it in the background of some of these photos. Um, it's a huge visual departure from my usual work, but still going back to those same core ideas that zines represent. Uh, here I'm really addressing the idea of community. This object also uses specific dimensions from a garden that I kept uh, in 2020 with a friend of mine, and it uses plants from my most recent garden that I kept at a local co-op with my partner. Um, so really bringing together my experience gardening um, and how it's been a community-driven experience, always something I do with at least one other person. This idea is then uh, once again reiterated with the presentation of this work um, as this garden kind of became a stage for my collaborators, Emmy Smith and Abe Schreiner to arrange their work on. So I'm gonna wrap up this object section by tying in an image and text reference to show that even though my work has these two categories, they often blur. This is how to have more fun on your new bike, a zine I made to be in conversation with Bicycle 769 and Garden Sculpture. This scene leans heavily on institutional references and parody, the cover, a scanned cover from the manual that came with my bike, um, and the content references the formatting of like put it together manuals. There's also a call fun and it was shown in a gallery space within an academic institution. So really exploring this concept of the institution, who gets access to it and how they kind of tend to be a place where you take one step forward and two steps back. Here's the spread of the last pages of this scene where you can see a call fun on the right as well as a note about warnings that I pulled from a bicycle manual below my earthworm offering from me to you. These last pages seem like a really wonderful and appropriate 
place to end a presentation. So thank you for listening and I will do my best to answer any questions. All right, thank you so much Rio for your presentation and for sharing your work. Congratulations once again. Let's open it up for questions for folks. Uh, let's see, while people gather their thoughts, I'm gonna see what else we've got here. Pi was wondering who will be your audience and what do you think about the impact of your work? Yeah, I think generally my audience, um, as is like historical for zine makers, it's mostly myself um, realizing that the media that I wanna make uh, doesn't exist, so I'm making it myself. But then also these core like 20-ish people that uh, I'm constantly exchanging zines or artwork um, or letters or ideas with um, that have become kind of my core zine community. Okay. Recently in collaborative work, you have started making objects that are not directly related to zines. How do you feel that your collaborations have changed your practice? And that's a question by Allie. Yeah, I feel like um, for me, the, the move from zine objects to non-zine objects is one of like being a person that really likes to work with my hands. Um, so like kind of wanting that more sculptural element um, that zines don't always give me unless I'm folding them myself, in which case they're giving it to me an amount that is almost boring. <laughs> it's like folding a hundred zines. Um, but I think they do the same thing that zines do, and which is that they speak to these core ideas of collaboration and accessibility and um, like really working with the materials that I have on me uh, with or without the institution. Um, Allison says, love that, Rio. Let me see. I think I missed another question further up. Um, Emmy's wondering, can you talk about the role of a simile in your work? Yeah, um, I think that all of these um, parodies that I've been speaking to, like parodies of the institution and parodies to book, um, really are part of a fascination that I have with a simile and um, mimicry and duplication that I think also gets mimicked in my love of um, like this idea of like stealing bits and pieces of things, stealing from like actual conversations and stealing from mail. And I think that there's something that happens in that translation where it's removed from its original context. That's uh, really fascinating and kind of uncanny. Okay, thank you. Shilun says, good job. I'm curious, will you make a zine with some super colorful drawings of yours? maybe. Um, yeah, I have, I have a lot of trouble. I go back and forth on color with scenes because it can be so expensive to print. But um, I think the role that the internet plays there is that I can put all these colorful scenes that I wouldn't print on the internet where they can still be distributed and seen um, and maybe printed in very uh, like small quantities. Limited editions. Yes. Um, Anna says, how do you perceive the scale of your zines compared to your large objects? You mentioned public and private spaces at the beginning. Oh, well, maybe we should be a two-part question. Why don't you talk about the, um, the scale first, the scale of your zines versus your larger objects? Yeah, um, I actually think my answer is in part of where the second question goes in that um, I think zines can be kind of really private spaces, uh, especially when you work autobiographically it can get really diaristic. Um, whereas the sculptural objects, just by definition of being bigger and like more visible than a zine, like less to like open up and expose um, are really way more public spaces. Um, so I think that scale plays a part in that for sure. Okay. So then you address both of those questions. Yes. Um, Abe says, and seem to pop up a lot as imagery. Can you elaborate on this? Yeah, so ants do this thing um, called ant milling, also known as ant death spirals, where which is where um, one ant will somehow lose the pheromone trail. This happens only with army ants and then start following its own pheromone trail. And then all the ants behind it are following that ant. So they swirl in this huge mass. Um, it's incredibly striking to see. And the only way for them to leave this like spiral that happens is either by dying or if due to like some kind of uh, 
like non-levelness in the ground, the ants can like unspiral themselves because they're really just moving in a straight line. Um, but because of how level the ground is, in the place where they end up spiraling, they end up spiraling forever. And I just think it's super fascinating and a really interesting metaphor for uh, where a lot of these like tiny narratives go and it's like kind of spiraling within themselves. Thank you. Thank you for that. Let's see. Uh, oh, Abe says interesting. And I actually think we started you a minute earlier. Um, so we can just add a minute to the break. Um, thank you so much, Rio, for your presentation and for your work. Congratulations once again. And best of luck with your future endeavors. Yeah, thank you.